be understand this fact that my imagined I or that I would rather put it that way that I imagines to be happy in the world outside and that imagined I thought that I will celebrate birthday everyone will be around me but I do not have control over the world outside no people the world is constantly changing. We had that imagined I as we grow. So that I imagined husband, imagined wife, imagined being rich, imagined being, uh, you can add Ferrari. Huh? Imagined kids, uh, Ashok might be thinking, now I'm waiting to become a grandfather. These are imagined. So our master says that we must have the knowledge, right knowledge, because this is imagined knowledge. And this imagined knowledge is the cause of ignorance. That is why we say Satasangatve. I'm repeating it again so that it goes into your head. Even if it doesn't go, it's okay. But it should go. Ah, what is that Satasangatve? Constant learning from the teacher. Constant learning from the teacher should. Ah, learning and listening leads to detachment with the imagined I. That imagined I now no longer imagines that happiness is outside. Simple. If I become a husband, I will be happy. How many husbands are happy? Well, that includes how many wives are also happy. <laughs> Imagine. See, think of this, think. So master prompts us, invokes us, motivates us, inspires us. So let us think. Don't put the imagined I in day-to-day -day living. That is why we have to listen and learn daily and daily and daily and until the mind. Huh? So what happens? The master gives this verse that satsangatve nisasangatvam. Ah, listening and learning drops that image in I and it results into detachment. So once we, the mind is in the state of detachment, what happens? It drops the delusion. What is that delusion? What is that delusion? That delusion caused by the imagined I, I just said, I will be happy. I will be happy with a situation, with a person, with a designation. It is not possible. So that delusion goes away. And the moment that delusion goes away, your mind is empty. The mind is naturally steady. So we are studying this text. It demands, it says no religion, don't bring any curd, don't bring any dogma, don't bring any practice, no belief. It is only a matter of self-inquiry. Inquiry into our real self. Listening with these small principles and reflecting on it and awakening to knowledge and clarity. The moment we awaken to that knowledge, we are already there. So what happens after listening, 
contemplation is required. Why? Let me express in a different way. By reflection and contemplation, the knowledge is internalized. Knowledge is internalized. If it is not internalized, will the mind will push us again to the imagined life. Claiming outer world as real, where the delusion and the suffering. Thousands of people, millions of people study these texts. It's open. But still they are suffering because the knowledge is not internalized. Knowledge is not realized. So we, because it is not realized, the mind will continue to work with the suffering. When women on Thursday's session, uh, no, the other session in New Jersey, she said that, you know, I started working on detachment and I became very sad and lonely. So that imagined I keeps looking in the mind that is working in the mind and outside. No, I don't talk to you. Husband is false. I said, did you say to your husband that you are false? Come on. Come on, you have to remove that imagined I in the mind. So the knowledge needs to be internalized. If it is not internalized, this mind will push us. The world outside is real. Do whatever you want to do. And that causes the conflict. So the contemplation is the path of knowledge to the real self, according to this teaching. It is knowing the real self, not knowing a person, home, and the cup. We want to, or we think that we think if the way we know the car, honey, we can know the real self. No, it is not possible. Why? Ask the question. Why? I know you. I know this remote. Can I know myself the way I know the remote? That is what the contemplation is. Can I know this remote? Yes, I know it. It is an object of my mind. I know it is in front of my mind. So can I bring my real self in front of my mind? So if the answer is yes, then who is behind the mind? Who will know who? Are you understanding? They're going deeper. Who will know whom? So one real self inside and one real self outside. That makes the problem. So the way of knowledge in the real self is not through the sense organs. Sense organs cannot help me to realize the real self. So that is why we say, that is why what we say, that no object in the mind can ever help me realize who am I. Yes. Now we come to the meditation. So after contemplation, when we practice meditation, so-called, it is a non-practice, but when we practice meditation, now I'm aware. What I'm aware? that any object coming to the mind has to be thrown out. 
because that will not help me to know my real self. It is something how it should be done according to this teaching. You are traveling from home to office, to workplace. They both happen together. You are going far from the home and you are approaching the workplace. Driving is happening. Two movements are happening at the same time. Did you understand? So I'm going away from the home means I my mind has made home the world outside lot of thoughts. So I leave those thoughts completely. I do not take them for granted. I say whatever the thought coming to my mind, I'm not at all concerned because any thought cannot help me to know my real self. It's a firm conviction. We already know, but conviction comes when you contemplate and reflect. And that helps you to move into meditation. So that is the firm conviction. What is that? What is that firm conviction that no thought, no object, no sense perception, no imagination, no hallucination is able to find me, who am I? So you are going away from the home. Now you have to reach to the workplace. So let us take the workplace as the real self. So your mind keeps that awareness I am during the practice. That is what we do. When we go to the, when we are driving to the workplace, the mind keeps that awareness. You know, I have reached office. Sometimes you take a ramp, oh, I did the mistake. Let me return. Huh? Is it not happening? Huh? Has raised a hand, open queue. Kate, why you have raised your hand? Because I'm confused. I could, You're... in my mind, yeah, in my mind, I'm confused. I could never associate the workplace as going to the real self. I could potentially associate home with coming to the real self, but I don't know that I could associate <laughs> going to work as being real. Does that make, you know, it doesn't, doesn't compute to me. In other words, I could, I could consider driving home as going to the real place, but I don't... I, when the metaphors, examples are taken as a reality, it is also imagination. So it is I get simple. that. I get it that. Is a metaphor. And once we take it as a metaphor, the problem is solved. Problem is solved. You know, there was a frog in the fish. Huh? So there was a flood and the fish entered into the well. And the frog asked, oh, from where you have come? Oh, I came from an ocean. How big it is? Oh, it's very big. So frog jumped. Oh, it is this big? No. It is bigger than this. No, I don't understand. I don't understand. So what happened again, the flood came and the fish and the frog went into, they were pushed into an ocean. But if you ask me how the fish and the frog can talk to each other, come on, I'm giving an example. I'm giving you a metaphor. Either you take home or you take workplace, you take it. Metaphor. So first, there are two things. Let me agree with you, Kate. Where is the problem? You are driving from workplace to home. <laughs> you have to understand the 
two movement of the mind. One movement of the mind, it is not at all concerned about whatever the thoughts, perception, imaginations, feeling enters into your mind. You are not touching that. But your mind is holding either the thought and awareness of who am I. Once that is done, you will enter into meditation. So the first part, what is that? What I am not is negated in the mind, in the knowledge. Oh, I have to make an effort by negation. Really? I have to make an effort by negation? Really? No. You are simply aware. You are simply aware. Take any, another example. <clears throat> you and your honey and other people are also there. Do you make an effort to recognize that, you know, here is my honey and they are not my honey. It's a matter of awareness. So when there is a conviction that any object does not contain the property of peace and happiness, these, this wandering mind does not has any meaning. Mind is wandering only to seek peace and happiness outside. Did you get it? We are going deeper and deeper. So now only thing is left, only occupation for the mind is left. Who am I? The mind keeps there, mind is there, mind is there, mind is there. And in that mind is there, that mind merges with the pure consciousness and you have the meditation. Understand from a different perspective. Now ask the same question, how long it takes you to reach from home to your workplace or from a point A to, to, a to B? <clears throat> so we have a distance, we have a time. And I used to ask in New Jersey that how long it takes you to reach to your office? 10 minutes. Somebody said 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, now let me uh, answer this question. How long it takes you to reach to yourself? Some people said, you know, infinite time. Come on, where are you? You are here and now. You are here and now. So who is that here and now? Is it imaginative I with a delusion? Or you have emptied that imaginative I, then it will not take the infinitive I. Then what happens? How long it takes me to reach to myself? No time, no space. I am here and now. So that conviction through the contemplation results into meditation that I have found the real self. I am a firm conviction that I am not an object of the world. Drop them without any effort. I am not what mind knows, what mind knows that I am stressed, I'm happy because of you and I'm stressed because of you. So when I am not, what mind knows, because mind cannot know the real self. I am not waking sleep in the dream state. That is the journey. I am not an expression of the mind. Then the mind stays deeper. It leaves the world naturally. What is left is I am. This is what the master. Can I see that 
there is what is that thing in the world which is not changing find out whatever the mind knows that is constantly changing so i need to be simply aware aware that the entire world is changing and that is the objective reality and the objective reality cannot be I am. But there is a hidden thing here. Who knows that world is changing? That knower is the real self. It is present here and now. Are you getting it? It is present here and now. Imagined I has covered it. So when the imagined I drops subjective reality, that is what the real self. So master gives another clue to understand that needs to be. Huh? So first take an example, waves and the waves. What is the relationship between the waves and the waves? Honey, you give me happiness. No, if I live with the honey, even if I don't live with the honey, so my honey becomes my car, my wealth. So individual and individual, waves and waves. Understand that point clearly. Three levels of understanding, three levels of awareness, waves and waves. How do I see you? I'm an individual, you are an individual. You have certain traits, I have certain traits, I'm a teacher, you are a student, like this. There are a lot of differences. The moment my mind keeps working as an individual, which is imagined I, I create another object outside. Waves and waves. We see many versus many. Everyone has a different trait. Then the mind enters into those traits. It creates the world. This is what the world is. I have an imagined eye. And then I see the world around in different parts, the waves and the waves. First level. Second level, waves and ocean. One wave, how small it is. The world is so big. One in the man. Waves in the ocean. Third level, ocean in the water. You see, that is how we see. That is how our mind interacts. Now, the master says, once we have understood individual to individual relationship, I have a relationship starting from the remote to the human beings, to father, mother, parents, son, kids, etc. All individual relates to the individual. Huh? Is it true or not? Now the master asks questions. Is wave true? And the second question it asks, is ocean true or false? So our definition of the truth and the real self is that it is never changing reality. And what is changing is imposed by the mind with the name and the form. Is wave not the water? So when the knowledge is internalized, I see the water is nothing but the wave also, manifesting wave. Same way, the water is nothing but an ocean, and water is already water. I have found my ideas. Are you understanding? So it's, it's a knowledge, knowledge part. First part of the knowledge, it is ignorance, waves versus waves. 
individual versus individual. Or I imagine I, and then I relate myself to anywhere I relate myself to this individual, then father and the son, two individuals, two waves, yeah? student and the teacher. That individual relates without knowing the reality. That is what the master says, waves versus waves. You cannot solve the problem of life. Because you are much, you are understanding the world at a very superficial level. And then waves versus ocean. Waves versus ocean. One versus many. Oh, how big the world is. Why? Because I have an imagined individual in me. And then comes the ocean and the water. So now find out, if there is no water, can there be a wave or ocean? Can you create waves without water? Can you create ocean without water? So that knower is in us. That water is the real eye, the pure consciousness, is the knower. The knower passes through the mind. Mind creates an imagination. Then I say, I am a teacher. Who, where is the teacher? There is no teacher. Waves are not there. Water is. Pay attention. Water is. Ocean is not there. Water is. What is that isness? Ah, let me, let me go a little deeper. What is this? Remote is. So is is also present here. Mouse is, Christina is, Kate is, David is. Is is present behind the name and the form. That is, is a real yourself, that is pure consciousness. It is present everywhere. Find out, can you remove this is-ness in any object, in any person, in any event? Situation is, stress is, <laughs> craziness is, happiness is. After all, it gives me the knowledge, it gives me a yes, is, yes, 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 is. I am that is. I am not the name in the form. I am not the wave. I am not the ocean. Did you get it? Mine will say, yes, yes, I get it. But more and more contemplation is required. So once you have that isness, we find this isness is never changing. Now explore just a, in a one liner that what is this isness? What do you mean by is? Isness is existence. Isness is a common factor. Krishna is, Kate is, Sam is, Stephen is, David is, Jerry is, Brandy is, is. Oh, even the remote is, monitor is. Happiness is, stress is, anxiety is. So what the imagine I does? It means that now he says, anxiety is, that is why I'm anxious. Don't you see I am depressed? So that depression is objective knowledge. I am not the object. 
I can never be the object. Do you see that? No, at least, you know, you understand that. And then we contemplate. So we find that real self is here and now. And because isness is always there, it can never go away. Tell me, anything that you can use without is. Think of this. Think, think. Tell me. The moment you express through the thought, is. Do you see the thought is? Is means exist. It represents the existence and that existence is consciousness. Think of this. When I say existence is consciousness, that is a false statement. As if they are two. It is only one. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Let us be there in that state. We are already there. Eyes are closed. So we are. I am peace and happiness. That indicates our true nature. So this text, we have been talking and discussing about the three states. So today we will go a little deeper into how do I know after I wake up from the sleep that I heard a sound sleep. How that thought came into the mind. And who is responsible? <clears throat> so we all understand that uh, now you have been understanding that there is a big difference between a normal inquiry that uh, normally the scientists do. They do not know. The object is unknown. And then they begin the inquiry. They know it. The properties and qualities and ultimately they publish their research paper and they say, yes, we have done it. So how it is different from the self-inquiry? The self-inquiry means that, you know, I something about, I know something about myself. I know that I am the body, I am the mind, I am the thought, I have the pain, I have the headache. But at the same time, I do not know that I am the real self. So we have two. We have two types of knowledge. So some confusion is there. Confusion is there or delusion is there. <clears throat> so we have to apply the power of discernment. We have to filter out what I am not. So that we can find we are our real self. That is why the self-inquiry is different from the self-discovery or self-discovery in the Eastern wisdom is different from the discovery in the world outside. And it has to be done by the intellect. We need not to do any practice. I know you are Stephen, you are Brani, so the way I know means I have separated. Can I filter out internally in my mind through the thoughts by understanding? So the moment we filter out what I am not, I'm already in the state of meditation. And that is what we have been talking about, shreyas, prayers, rich mind, poor mind, our emotional dependence. So here we are not talking. We are going directly into the self-discovery. Our goal is to discover the real self. One thing to understand. Another point, that uh, discovery is not a produce or a production. I think you all are clear. We have to keep in mind. 
discovery is not a produce or production we create something in production we find or know what is already here and now so here we are it is already there real self is already there so i have to know it and the knowing does not demand any action it is the subjective reality i'm laying a i'm laying a, a foundation for that now there are two things in knowing what is that what i know are many and who knows is only one i know all of you same way you know all of them so in the process of knowing by the mind there are always two things known and the knower the object and the subject there are many objects you know my eyes is one vision and i see the light and the wall and the monitor and the camera and you guys all first thing we have to live into that awareness and attention and then it becomes a magic here first thing clear now when i know that here is sam i do not become sam i see the stephen i do not become stephen i i see the brandy i do not become brandy i see the pain and i become the pain now we are coming closer from outside to inside i see the monitor is here and it is 100 percent clear that this monitor is different from me but i know that i have a pain i am not able to separate it i am stressed do you see that when you see your home you do not become home when you see your honey you do not become honey when you have a pain you become pain when you know your anxiety you become anxiety no 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 don't talk to me i'm upset and i have an anxiety but that is separate do whatever you want to do the knower and the known are always separate it's a very clear laid down understanding that whatever i know my mind knows is separate from me so i know i have a pain pain is separate from me i know i have a body body is separate from me it it clearly says that i am not the body can i live into that awareness home phone car gadgets are not me because they are known they are object whatever i know known experienced is an object am i clear i am pain not me take care of the pain but i'm not me i know pleasure or experience pleasure or perceive pleasure which is an object is not me i know pain and suffering are separate from me why because i am a subject same way i know perceive and experience the body is not me I know thoughts of pain, pleasure, craziness, laziness, it again is not me. Are you getting it? Principle, same principle, subject and object, known and the knower. So this is one of the beauty, most beautiful principle. Now understand, let us go deeper and to understand the exploring the sleep state. Did you sleep last night soundly? Oh, yeah. okay. With a with a big sound. That is sound sleep. <laughs> so Nancy, let us explore the sleeping state. 
direct knowledge in a waking state do you remember there are four things in the direct knowledge the object of knowledge for example sam is an object of knowledge if i say that i know sam so that is a thought so there is an object in the thought object is sam then there is a perception then there is a thought plus consciousness without consciousness no thought no perception no object of knowledge Are you, are you with me? No worries, even if you are not with me, so. so. Who follows 100% anyone? <laughs> so I know you is a thought, there is you in, I know you in the thought is an object. So there is a perception, knowing or experiencing you can use different words perception knowledge experience and there is i am is consciousness without consciousness i cannot say i know you clear have you seen first know the memory have you have you seen or how can I say? You have seen me before. So the moment you see me, you recognize. So what is that cognition coming from the memory? Clear? Without memory, you do not, you cannot recognize me. So when I see you directly and I say, Brandy, memory is working behind. Am I clear? I'm going a little deeper, step by step. So when I see you directly, but memory is working behind, instantly I say, here is Brandy. We are understanding memory. Memory takes the help of direct perception. Every memory depends on any object that I had seen before or in the past. Right? Little deeper, but not so deep. So I had the memory of the past. That memory with the direct perception helped me to know who is Brandy, who is Stephen, who is Kate, and etc. Now we are concluding. This master is so beautiful. He doesn't beat about the bush. He doesn't talk about the poor, rich mind, etc. He says, no, come directly. You have to be in meditation. So where there is a memory, there is an experience in the past. Then only you can express it. Right? I do not remember, I do not recall what I do not know in the past. Am I clear? Clear? Are you clear? Okay. So now we have to understand when I express that I had a sound sleep, this thought has memory. And if it has a memory, where it is? After I wake up, I say I had a sound sleep. Or I had a disturbed sleep. Are you clear? So this thought is a memory in the mind or somewhere. That is why just after wake up, I say I had a sound sleep or I had a disturbed sleep. Clear? Where is the memory? There, wherever there is a memory, there is an experience in the past. Whatever I experience, I may not remember all. So in a waking state, I remember 
sleep. That I had a sound sleep. So four things have to be there. An object, perception, thought, and consciousness. Clear? That is what I covered. In every experience that we have a thought, we have a perception, huh? we have an object, and we have a consciousness. Consciousness is common. Are you getting it? Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Now, question comes, what is an object in deep sleep? Ask yourself. <laughs> Look at the way this master goes directly. What is that? So again, I'm reminding you, there are four things in getting a knowledge. Object of knowledge, perception, thought, and consciousness. Sound sleep is an object of experience. That is very clear. Huh? What is that object of experience? Do you know in deep sleep that you had a sound sleep? So what is the object in the mind? That object is ignorance. That is why I say, I do not know if I am sleeping soundly in deep sleep. I do not know I am in deep sleep. Very clear. So what it means, I do not know, that is ignorance. I do not know is ignorance. It is absence. It is absence of an object. Understand. Remote is there. So I know that remote is there. So no I beforehand. So I had a thought that this is remote. Where is the remote? Uh, um, no, it is not there. So absence. Hmm? Absence. So absence is an object of experience in deep sleep. Did you understand? Object of thought is ignorance. So what is my knowledge? It is the thought of ignorance plus consciousness. So here comes a beautiful way to understand there is a physical body. There is a subtle body which is known as mind. And there is a causal body where the thought takes place, but I remain ignorant. And that thought that I had a sound sleep is expressed the moment I wake up from the sleep. Why you are in a so hurry? Explain me again, <laughs> slowly. <clears throat> we experience there are two things happening in the deep sleep one is the joy and other is ignorance that is why we can say i have a sound sleep right <laughs> it's going above your head bring it inside your head When we wake up, we experience, I had a sound sleep. That is a thought. And then sound sleep, it, sound sleep means I have a joy, I have a peace, and I have a happiness. But we did not know anything. Why? Because the object in deep sleep is ignorance. What do I experience? I experience nothing. Absence. It does not mean the thought is not there. That thought is very subtle here. It takes place in the casual body.
whatever is unmanifest does not mean experience is not there. Priyanda, understand it again. Four things, remember, object of knowledge, what is the object of knowledge in deep sleep? It is ignorance. I do not know in sleep that I'm sleeping, right? Who knows this? Consciousness. Consciousness knows it. But that thought does not, we do not recognize that thought that I had a sound sleep. Why? So the master says it is in the causal body. Causal body is subtler than the man mind. And the moment I wake up, instantly that thought returns in the waking state that I had a sound sleep. So I am present there even in deep sleep. That is what the master wants to prove. <clears throat> so when I'm present in deep sleep, who am I? I am pure consciousness. So when I live into that state, I'm already in the state of meditation. I give you an example. Mother said to the son, can you buy butter? Go out. And says butter is already there in the refrigerator. Where it is? It is in the milk. It is unmanifest. So it is unmanifest in sleep. So he is not telling a lie. The experience when it manifests. So when the mind becomes active, the moment we wake up we realize I had a sound sleep. That thought was already present in the casual state. And I recognize it. Who recognizes it? Who is this I? That is what the pure consciousness is. So I am pure consciousness. I am peace and happiness. So during sleep, a little deeper, Thought takes place in the causal body. We do not experience because the mind is absent. I cannot experience anything if the mind is not there. So in deep sleep, mind is sleeping. And so the joy is also experienced in deep sleep that I recognize the moment I wake up. Everyone is standstill. Everyone has understood, do not understood. So there are two objects in the deep sleep. One is joy and other is ignorance. Joy is there, but I'm ignorant about it. What, is obje what are the objects? Ignorance and joy. So there in the causal body, we have a thought of ignorance and ananda. When I wake up, instantly I say I had a sound sleep. It is coming from that causal body where the I experienced it. And who is this I? This I is pure consciousness. That is the real self. One thing more to understand here, that is the reason we have millions and billions of these thoughts as impressions are accumulated or being accumulated every day in the causal body. That causal body is known as the body of ignorance. Ignorance means I do not know. They do not resurface. They they have yet to manifest. You're talking to someone and the anger erupts. It is coming from the causal body and manifesting. Huh? We have these experiences. That is why we talk of three bodies, the physical body, 
mental body is known as the subtle body and subtler than the subtle body is the causal body there the experience of the deep sleep is there when i wake up i know i had a sound sleep and that i means that consciousness is present in the sleep state also we have to filter out self inquiry we are confused that if, if i am the body if i'm the waking state if i'm the dream state or if i'm the sleep state i'm none of them i'm not the body i'm not the man i am pure consciousness mano buddhir ahankara chittani naham nacha shrotra divvai nacha ghrana netre nacha vyoma bhumir na tejo na vayu chidananda rupa shivoham shivo great master shankara writes there are none of these five elements which are which makes the body mind breath intellect ego no thought then who am i i am the absolute pure consciousness it's worth contemplating and reflecting the moment you wake up in the morning and the mind says i had a sound sleep come on hold on mind why don't you know in the deep sleep why you are telling me why you are passing out this information now in the waking sleep The more and more contemplation and reflection will make you clear. Oh, it is. I is present. That I is pure consciousness is present in the deep sleep. Also, the way it is present in dream, the way it is present in waking state. Are we studying? Are we studying very deep now? Casual. Just say I have understood, and let us start our bright <laughs> journey. <laughs> you will get it. <laughs> it's not. We are studying five chapters on what we say uh, the truth or existence. Five chapters on consciousness. Five chapters on bliss or ananda or the permanent happiness. That is our real nature so if you recall we have been talking about and understanding that real self is beyond transcends waking dream and sleep state our real self is that is what every master says they they give a different name whether you say it's a real self it is absolute existence consciousness bliss tell me one thing how many times your mind really desires real self during the day don't answer me answer in your mind It's a heavy snow. She Kate is looking behind, peeping into the window. <laughs> do, do you see that? Contemplating my permanent consciousness. Yes, yeah, permanent consciousness. Looking at the snow. Right. So, so you see that uh, there is a none should be an understanding in our mind that it is self-existent. You know, before I take up the more verses, I, I want to give a break so that you can easily understand the verses when I take up in the next session. So, real self is self-existent, self-evident, unchanging. So, what do you mean by unchanging? Unchanging means no action no ignorance no desire for anything outside you have to reflect on it 
self existent means it exists by itself it exists by itself it exists by itself means what body does not exist by itself body the shape in the name exists because of the food david everything is okay sound oh good i corrected before i asked sam to check it so you see that what we are trying to understand in today's session that how many times we actually the mind actually desires that i want real self and the moment i want real self that is self existent that is unchanging that is self evident it doesn't need anything to validate its presence but the moment you want to validate the presence you have that desire falls into the category of i have to perform some action i have to make some effort huh? i think you're getting it huh? because real self is of the nature of peace happiness love and wisdom as rightly stated by kate i agree with you <laughs> the you see that is the nature so it means there is an absence of pain attachment duality expectation that is what our real self is so then what happens so when we think speak and live our daily life we live in ignorance because we desire something outside and project happiness outside and in order to fulfill the desire we have to perform a karma or action but what the master is saying master is saying it is an effortless natural real self is already here and now why are we are not able to realize because of ignorance so what we are trying to understand because of ignorance desire pops up in the mind and because of the desire pops up in the mind we have to perform an action but the action is never complete Now, i give always an example of a honey you give the best to your honey and check if the honey is fully satisfied you give the best to your boss and check if the boss is fully satisfied you eat the best food check if the stomach is now oh i am full now no problem at all i don't want anything that is what we need to understand so when i have an understanding that action cannot lead me to realize the real self and action is caused by the desire and the desire is caused by the ignorance try it when i understand there is a permanent happiness what do i need why the mind should wander why the mind should be distracted and if it is distracted it is because of this trial that is what the master is going to explain in the future verses so you see that that is where we have covered couple of uh, topics that waking state dream state sleep state one common factor is there that is consciousness if the consciousness is not there then no thought no object no of knowledge of an object is there first thing and second thing objects keep changing now i'm happy 
No, you see that your mind says, I'm happy eating pasta. You have overeaten. Stomach says, I will tell you, go home. I'll tell you, no worries. You see, the dichotomy with, in the mind, I had a desire to eat pasta, to be happy, but the stomach says, I will make you unhappy. And <clears throat> That sort of awareness should be there in our day-to-day -day life. So consciousness is only one. It is a common factor. Object changes. So when the object changes, desire for the object changes, thought changes, level of the pleasure changes, everything is constantly changing. But I am the real self, which is an unchanging identity behind it. It's all a matter of awareness. When I live into that state of awareness, we understand that these sleep state, dream state, waking state, they continue, they change the object, they change their experiences, they have their own demands. But there is behind one consciousness, and that is our real self. I used to study, there is an American proverb, the ignorance is bliss. I think I'm right. Huh? You might have read it, ignorance is bliss. In Eastern wisdom, we say ignorance is suffering. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is suffering. Ah, you're lying down in the woods, you know, you're enjoying, and then you feel a very good touch, and that touch gives you a bliss. Later on, you realize it's a snake. Ignorance is bliss. We know. We say ignorance is suffering. That needs to be rightly understood because all of our actions originate from that ignorance. First, there is an ignorance. What is that ignorance? Ignorance is a sense of incompleteness. I don't feel happy. Let me eat first. Oh, let me take a drink. God, let me. Go ahead. You can add uh, millions of things. You know, let me have. That's a over casual approach, isn't it? In our day to day life, I'm not feeling good. Oh, let me grab. So, the moment you know that is ignorance, it causes the desire to feel the sense of completeness in object outside. But object does not contain the peace and happiness. So, first level is ignorance, second is the desire. Then I engage myself in all kinds of actions. An action is never complete. And that's how I become fully busy. <laughs> Do you see that? What do you mean? So we should stop doing every action? Who thinks like that? That is also another level of ignorance. What do you want to say? No, I mean to say what master wants to say. That needs to be clearly understood and settled in the mind. So when you settle yourself with, so ignorance is gone from the mind, and now the desire is not binding. Desire is not binding. And then what happens? What about your action? Action is a play and fun. You become, you become the best Hollywood actor. You do your action all the time. But you does not carry any impression in the life. So you are always free. In that freedom, you realize your real self. Let me do it again. Let me do it again.
So ask the question, what exactly is the cause of my action? Obviously, first is the ignorance. From the ignorance, the desire. Without desire, we do not do any karma, any action. Without desire of seeking something outside. Outside means I am unhappy. I feel incomplete in myself. I'm unsatisfied. So, I desire means mind desires to get something to be happy and to be satisfied. I was thinking in the morning, take an example of Elon Musk or uh, now Elon Musk has gone up <laughs> and the Bill Gates. Is the, is the happiness that we experience inside depends on the amount of the wealth or the object that I possess? Is the happiness that Bill Gates and Elon Musk experience is different from the happiness that I experience? No, no, it is different. He has, you know, he has 50 cars. So it means you are claiming that happiness is present in 50 cars. I'm talking about happiness within. Happiness is experienced inside, not outside. Happiness is the same. Experience of the pleasure experienced by the mind is the same. You have to reflect on it. The greater the reflection, the mind calms down. Why mind calms down? Because mind drops the ignorance. Oh, the 50 cars cannot bring me the happiness. Happiness experienced by the Elon Musk and the Bill Gates is the same that I experience. Come on, so I can experience happiness here and now. I'm asking there is another question. Can there be happiness and peace without desire and action? And there we solve this problem of ignorance in the mind. Think. Can there be happiness and or peace without desire and action? Some will say yes, some will say no. We already have an experience in deep sleep. We experience peace and happiness. There is no desire. There is no action. Do you agree? So now the solution is that, can I live consciously in that state? In that state, consciously. Consciously in that state where the action and the desire do not touch me. In a waking state. So what is the solution? Solution is simple. I am not the body. Well, continue performing an action. Like a Hollywood actor who plays the role of a criminal and he goes back to his home and his wife looks at him, oh, there is a criminal. No, it's a role. He knows it. He understands it. Understands the deeper principle. When body and the mind are not there, I experience deep sense of peace and calmness in deep sleep. But how do I feel the sense of body and the mind during the waking state? Because I feel I am the body and the mind. I'm the body, I'm the mind. I don't feel your body is me and mine. This is what Master says is ignorance. Desire in ignorance.
Let me repeat it. Desire is, is in the mind. I want to act to fulfill that desire. But desire is caused in the mind seeking happiness outside, which is not there. What is the reason? The reason is ignorance. I don't see that real self is the real self is made up of the peace and happiness. The reason? Three levels. Ignorance, desire, action. It has delved deeply almost in more than 50 verses in Gita. Gita is one of the most famous texts of Eastern wisdom. But again, the next question comes, we cannot live without action. Life is action. What is causing action? Ignorance and the desire. So what is causing confusion? Ignorance is simply confusion, delusion, wrong notion. What is the wrong notion? Wrong notion is that I am the doer and I am the enjoyer. We mixed up I with the body. I am not the body. It is 100% sure that we are not the body. We are not the mind. But body enjoys hunger. Belongs to the stomach, not to me. Thirst belongs to the body, not to me, but I mix up, I mess up my life. I say I am the doer, I am happy eating the food. Stomach says, I will tell you later, you have overeaten. Mind says, no, I will eat this food. Stomach says, I will not digest. Do whatever you want to do. Mind says I'm eating only vegan. Stomach says I'm not made for that vegan. Do whatever. I understood from one medical doctor in India that we take food supplements, a lot of vitamins. So he did a couple of research studies. He said only 5% of the content of these food supplements are assimilated by the body. The rest goes out. And that can be met by selecting with the wisdom that what is required with it. So again, I'm coming to the same question. How should we do karma? Let us do all the karma in our daily life as a play, as a role play. You are before your husband, play a role of the wife. But that play is not a fun. Play that you are focused you are ready to give little more than expected. You are an employee, do your role. Play your role so that this I-ness attached to the body performing the karma should not create any impression. Are you getting It's not very deep, but it's still deeper. Still deep. So that doership and the enjoyership is absent in the mind. And you are still doing every action. What a beautiful way this master explains. When we were a kid, our parents said, see, look at the plane that is moving. It's a toy plane. We agreed. We accepted. No, it's a plane. But when we became adult, then we realized it's not. It's a toy plane. Same thing. 
there's a lot of issue, lot of understanding even if the mind is in the doubt that uh, how can you say i'm doing the action i'm not doing hand is doing the action throat is larynx body is performing an action but i am not the body so there is no doer i am simply aware before during after the action i live from moment to moment I recognize there is only one consciousness behind all my actions. I leave the role of a doer and the enjoyer. I drop the ignorance. I am settled in. Now you can easily answer that what causes this action as a doer do you have an answer in the mind it is attachment emotional dependence there is nothing more than that you beautify the body you decorate the body existence is now the time has come <clears throat> I heard a beautiful story <coughs> that, that a guy asked the shopkeeper, where is the permanent home? Do you recall? I have told you that story. So that shopkeeper says, go straight, turn right, first left. That is the permanent home. So he followed. And he found the cremation ground. Permanent home of the body is the cremation ground. It's not my permanent home. <laughs> Did you get it? Permanent home of the body is per cremation ground. <laughs> so there... Master opens a Pandora box that, okay, what causes this action? What causes me to perform the action, remain fully busy all the time as a doer and they enjoy? Because I will do it and I will enjoy. <laughs> How many of us we enjoy <laughs> doing the work of, doing the work maybe in the organization? How many of us we enjoy doing those actions in our family? If you examine, it comes from the attachment. Simple logic. I go to work to get the pay, but happiness Possible or not possible? Happiness is possible if I perform my duty, my work as a rule. Finished. Play your rule all the time. Find out. When you play your rule, you are doing good. You will find out the mind does not have that burden to carry. I'm only scared. I feel the sense of incompleteness. I have worries only because I am the doer and the enjoyer. And that comes from the ignorance. First, ignorance, desire that projects the happiness outside in the world. Then I continue to perform the action. Why? Last point and then we'll ask yourself why we always like what say or we feel we are all fully busy my previous action is not complete did you did you take it that my previous action is not complete but who feels that my previous action is not complete the doer and who is the doer in you who is attached to the body and the mind 
today I will love you, honey. I will, then I will have total happiness. No, you, again, you feel the sense of incompleteness. I have eaten pasta today and I like it. Next week again, I will go because my action is not complete. Think, think. Any action, if it is complete, give me. But if you drop the burden, if you drop that eyeness of a doer and the enjoyer, you simply play your role. You drop the burden of dissatisfaction, of insecurity, of desire, of projection. Mind is free. You live in the body and the mind without the body and the mind. This is what, so you have to contemplate and reflect so that we can go deeper in the future teachings of this master. Let us start our journey. Eyes are closed. I say.